Boom. Hello and welcome to the Protector Nation podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to making the world a better place, making the world a safer place by making good people dangerous. In this podcast, we're going to study and understand what it takes to protect, to protect your family, to protect your loved ones, because we all know that you have a few basic needs, food, water, and shelter, but you also have the need to protect those things in a world and society where evil runs rampant and is sometimes left unchecked. Learning how to protect yourselves and your loved ones is becoming more and more important. And so we strive to raise the level of accountability to those who would do evil on this planet by making sure that the sheep, that the flock, is more well versed in protecting themselves and their loved ones. If that sounds interesting to you, then sit back and enjoy the show. Out. Boom! Oh, what's up, you guys? Byron Rogers here with another awesome episode. Uh, Today, I've got the honor of digging in with Jeff Johnsgaard of Natural Tactical Systems. How are you doing today, brother? Excellent, brother. Thank you for having me. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited to have you. I uh, recently went to that training through Neoteric Arms with Daniel, uh, and that was my first time hearing from you. And um, I think the main thing that blew my mind, man, was the first day we didn't even, uh, I mean, we barely shot and you like, like round, like we didn't, it wasn't, you know, you go to these, some of these courses and you get that dopamine from just firing rounds endlessly, you know, and they're like, you might not learn anything, but you're going to have a good time. So you come back. Right. But I remember we didn't shoot much, but it was the most intellectually stimulating time I'd had on a range in a really long time. And what really blew me away, other than the fact that I was like, so psychologically, like with the way you were communicating was like really stimulating. I was picking up so much and things I thought I knew how to do. I watched you break them down. Like my draw, like you broke everything down into these smaller steps, reorganized and we analyzed those steps and made it more efficient. That was amazing. Then the other thing was the fact that all we did was fundamentals. All we did was fundamentals. Yeah, and I like you go to all these trainings with all these dudes, and then you always have a fundamentals portion. But you know, so you can kind of almost like be like, all right, fundamentals, whatever. But I just I can't say enough that the way you explained it really helped me reorganize the way I was looking at fundamentals. And so I was so much more engaged than I would be generally when i was when i'm doing that stuff man so it's an honor man uh to learn from you that was an amazing experience for sure well thank you very much for saying that uh it's a, that's well, a great effort i'll get you your 20 bucks uh, for the ad <laughs> later but uh yeah there's so much to talk about in regards to what you just said there to break that down but uh, that's exactly it i mean there i would have we could have just gone i want to work on my splits i want to work on my target acquisition absolutely no problem we would have used the same process to do that, but when you're talking about trigger control, you know, getting that final firing grip, which is dictated by two things, right? Uh, you know, as we broke down, um, right. and then and then just and then just the consistency and finding those things again immediately that we didn't realize we weren't doing. So it was like kind of I don't want to call them training scars, but it was just not optimal, right? I mean, there's no. There's no sense in calling it anything else. We're always chasing or I'm always chasing. That's the idea. More optimal. And, and how do you define that? Well, you got to figure out what you're doing and then you have to have a framework for that. So, you know, like I said, uh, you know, uh, we, we talked about the quiet eye a little bit or, you know, and things of that nature. And of course, that is all absolutely going to, I mean, simply put, whether you're a, 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 a shooter in competition or gunfighter or what, whatever lane you're chasing, that's going to, it's going to improve you, right? In 15 minutes of understanding those principles, you're going to be a better shooter. And that's a, that's a, that's a very broad statement to make, you know, but as I said to you, um, uh, you know, I, I, I was just working with another SWAT team, right? And I said, you know, we're going to follow this framework over the next few days. I said, and I'm not going to bet my paycheck that you're going to be better as is defined by these measures. I'll bet my pension on it because <laughs> we've done it so many times yeah. that it's just, that's just the way it is. And, I, and it's hard to not sound like a, just a cock when you say that a little bit, right. You know, right. like a cocky person, but you, uh, that luckily you were in front, right. You know, we had that, and there was a diverse group of people there too. Um, and it was five more pounds on their barbell that day 
but it was a different five pounds for each person, you know? So yeah. anyway, I'm excited to have this talk. You, uh, you let me know what you want to dive into. And of I course. just appreciate the opportunity for, you know, you got quite, quite an audience as I've, I've now got on Instagram myself and that, and you're yeah. on there quite a bit. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm just excited about the whole thing. So tell me what we're going to do and, yeah, and man. Uh, have a great time. Yeah, absolutely. No, I got you. So when you said um, we've done it so many times and then we'll get into background so people know why they're listening to you. Right. <laughs> but so when you said you've done it so many times, talk, can you talk a little bit about that uh, so people can understand the types of um, impact you've had, you know, in your, your crew have had teaching tactically? Uh, OK, yeah. So I guess for over a decade now, I've been like formally trying to study how to learn better how to communicate better. Um, and it just so happens that I think, uh, uh, you know, firearms, self-defense, things of that nature, being a, you know, I was uh, being a police officer myself, right? I'm in my 19th year now. And, uh, you know, I really believe truly deeply in the ability to protect oneself, to, uh, to not have, uh, you know, evildoers uh, execute their will on us and all the rest of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it, it's, uh, so I believe deeply in that cause uh, have, being self-sufficient, um, um, you know, being able to band together and, and uh, you know, in times even such as these. Um, and so short version is, is that, you know, there are, some, there are certain tactics and tools and, and those little things that we can take and clip on our, our tool belt, right, our bat belt, such as the compressed shooting position, right, that John Wick shooting position, that's, that, that's a Lego block, as I, as I said to you, right, that you can learn very quickly and easily because it works really well. And now inside of a vehicle, for example, or inside of this room, you know, you're certainly going to be better off, you know, fighting with people, whether um, that kind of idea. So there's those tools and those things. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the method or the process to learn and to pass on information and to learn myself, right? Because I'm a, I'm a full-time student, part-time instructor, right? Mm. That kind of idea, at least mentally, that's what I say. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so I didn't know how much I didn't know about proper training, really, until I met a man named Ken Murray, who wrote a book, Training at the Speed of Life, Volume 1. And so mm. he is the guru. He's a co-inventor of simunition, <laughs> those paint pellets, yeah. <laughs> those paint pellets. They wake uh, up, they're good for training. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, he jokingly said that he ran out of ways of doing it wrong. Uh, uh, luckily, no one got killed or something like that. But right. uh, there is just these slight differences in how information can be presented, discussed, that format. And, and the words you just used, uh, if I could go back in my short term memory here, you know, things like it kept you engaged. Uh, and, and that was with jokes and that was with quips and that was with diving into information that was very heavy. And, I mean, we are talking about shooting people in self-defense, right? right? You know, uh, as well. But but keeping you at a level where, you know, neuroplasticity takes three things, they say, right? So alertness, focus and rest. And then that's slow wave, deep sleep. So if I can if I can get your alertness, your focus and optimize that rest period that that night and the night after you're learning a motor skill, a physical movement, well, now I'm going to learn it faster. I'm going to learn it better. And if I can then get into how you're thinking about, let me grab this because I always, your trigger control, right? How you're working that trigger. You know, we talked about that. How many parts is your trigger? And I can't remember what you said. Like, do you remember? Like when I said, how many pieces is your trigger? How many parts? How many, how many stages? How many whatevers, you know? Like, yeah, I think it was like three or four. I mean, there's the slack, the wall, and then squeezing through that wall and then reset so great four. okay so that, so that tells me how you're thinking about it because remember yeah. i can i can say anything to anyone mm -hmm. but knowledge builds on knowledge so if i understand what and how you understand something i can immediately teach you better well how right. do you do that well you have to seek first to ask to understand why what how someone is doing something yeah. And so, but you know, and, and what people always do is we distort, we delete, and we generalize. These are neuro, neuro linguistic programming principles, right? right. Uh, and so, you know, I could say, draw me a lamp is my standard thing. And I get a desk lamp and a genie's lamp and other kinds of, but I said lamp, right? right. Because language is an imperfect form of communication. 
Hmm. So I'm trying to get something that if I'm just shit hot and awesome at doing all these zoomy guy skills with my pistol, that's great. But do you know how you got there? Yeah, I practiced the crap out of it. Okay. What did you practice? Where are you looking? Remember we did the the th- extend your arm thumbnail visual angle, yeah. right? So, I mean, a lot of people just don't understand those concepts to begin with. It's not their fault, but to understand those concepts means that we can all of a sudden find feedback where we had none before and therefore get better. We're like unpacking kind of what you were saying there. Uh, and I just, it's hard to do because it's not intuitive and we don't right. usually do that. But when you learn those things, then all of a sudden the, as I joke about the funny talking that I do with you, you know, and, and every, um, like the students, that type of idea that yeah. asking these kind of stranger questions and having them like, there's a lot of this thinking about what you're saying. And I don't know, I never thought about that before. That's right. exactly it. I am, I'm helping you to connect synapses in your brain that have never connected before. Never met before. (laughs) They've never met before. And that's the point, isn't it? So, uh, you know, and then when it comes to motor learning, when it comes to decision making under stress, when it comes like these are the things that matter because you could have faster splits. You could have a faster draw time. But if I get my hand on my gun first, I'm going to win every time because I made the decision because I saw it happening. Right. So that type of idea. And so. Uh, you know, especially in the EP world, that's huge, which is why I do a lot of stuff with EP people, right? Because that's, that's their game. Awesome, man. I feel like, cause on the range, it's almost like we're just focused on trying to shoot faster. Everyone's trying to shoot faster. You know, it's like, how did I do this? Oh, uh, or even it, it feels like instructors are teaching us that way. Are there any like um, quantifiable results you've seen from approaching instruction this way or in a new way because that's what really for me i was like this feels different and has been a completely different type of experience you know um what have you seen in the past and i know you got a bunch of peer-reviewed journal articles and things like that on this type of method really helping folks yeah okay well that's a good quality question because i I mean according to who based on what right right Uh, you know that's the idea so yeah, there was a uh, there's a study that I can speak to. The only people that uh, really had the money to study it, I mean, police and military and that type of thing, was the Australian uh, SAS. All right, so the SAS are the Special Air Service Regiment, and so they're two. Yeah, they're all right. They're, they're, they're okay. oh yeah, no, they're excellent. Yeah, they're absolutely <laughs> yeah. excellent. And yeah, so, <laughs> and so they're uh, but they also have uh, the funds, right? So Perth University did a study with them. So the short version is is that a whole bunch of these instructors got together. Uh, and they started teaching, quote, regular soldiers, right? So I, I realized that the SAS are, are tier one a group. They were teaching just regular guys, like, like, me, you know, like that kind like of us. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? Exactly. And they found a 500% increase in five days in their shooting standards. 500. 500. Percent increase. Yeah. So it was a two week course. Yeah, there was decision making, there was scenarios, there was all the rest of it. There was all this stuff, you know, uh, based off of based off of shooting drills, right? So not gunfighting, but shooting drills, and then they moved to scenarios. But the point being is that uh, I t- uh, I'm trying to remember back to uh, what we did in uh, so day one, I think it was was uh, was kind of that intro science of optimal defense pistol you know that kind of idea, and then yeah. I think it was day two was a 360 intro, right? Right, where we actually started doing some of the cool off eye tactics and all the stuff you know yeah yeah exactly and shooting quickly from defensive positions that are that are stronger than the ones that we're normally kind of getting into yeah exactly exactly so so that day i really kind of stretched it out to give a real good dose own the trigger Mm -hmm. own the grip why do we even say the word own right? right why is it a retention reload not a tactical emergency whatever reload remember how we talked about cognitive load Words right. Matter. So yeah, exactly. So um, everything is based off of the the best way for you to learn it, uh, so that it takes the least amount of energy, and that included how we talked about how I'd like you to practice now. So mm-hmm. if I take your tri- to to kind of bring that loop back around again, if I we yeah. talked about trigger and maybe like uh, you know I touch the trigger, I press the trigger, I feel the wall, and I and then it, it fires, sure. and then there's a reset or however many parts that trigger is to you. Mm-hmm. If I can turn that into eight, 
10 things. Uh, intuitively, you'd say, well, well, Jeff, I don't want to do that because this is something that has to happen under stress. I don't want 10 things to consider oh, and think about the rest of it. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but right. what Ken Murray taught me to, to bring all these things together is that if we, you know, when things go sideways, you need to be in a real hurry to slow the down mentally, right. right? Like when you think something's happening and it's and it's a drama and there's perception, slow down, think it through really easy. So right. we talked about internal and external frame of reference, right? So I could be in an internal and those are narrow and broad and external narrow and broad. Yes. So I could be internal, like, okay, uh, uh, you know, if I could get you to, uh, to feel your, your stance or something more broad, okay, as you're doing your thing, or internal, uh, just your finger on the trigger, or external, broad or narrow again, these are frames of reference. And if I can bring your attention to them at certain mm -hmm. times as we're learning something, I can build a better quality of mental picture and a physical motor pattern. Right. Mm. And so, so we go internal, right. When I'm thinking about doing those types of things and that builds out a better conceptualization and, and actually the motor program itself. Uh, and then external is where performance lives. So that's the quiet eye mm. stuff. In fact, I think I got the textbook here. That's the, that's the, there. So perception, cognition and decision-making, right. So the quiet oh. eye, yeah, Joan Vickers, actually a Canadian, another Canadian. Um, you got, you're all Canadians, man. You got some talent <laughs> up there. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, so that is, she discovered uh, and has been, there is a ton of good research on that. You know, three-point shooting in the NBA, uh, you know, uh, goalie, soccer, but on and on and on, driving, everything, where if I have a, uh, a, a, an external narrow focus where I'm keeping my eye in a certain place on and around the rim prior to a critical movement. I mean, I can break down the quiet eye for you. No problem. It's just, I don't know where you want to, where your listeners want to go yeah. with this, but, or another time, you know, I wrote some articles on it. In fact, they're on my website for free. There's uh, you can just go there. There's a couple of based off of gun stuff in the quiet. Yeah, just eye. give them a taste, taste of the magic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, so the idea there is that that's an external focus and it's narrow and that's where elite performance lives, right? So just in one, one kind of conceptualization there is they took biathletes mm -hmm. uh, and they stressed them and they showed up and they said, hey, you know, we want to uh, put a heart rate monitor on you and we want to test your scores and these people want to be in the Olympics, right? So they're competing to be in the Olympics and they, they took a baseline. And then they came back, I don't know how long it was later, but it was, I, I assume it was weeks uh, later, if not months. And they said, hey, we're going to test you again. Uh, and they wanted to stress them out. So they, so they brought the Olympic coach along and said, this though, uh, you know, our second, our second one is going to be your uh, uh, actual qualification for the Olympics. So no. if, you shit the bed, if you shit the bed, you're out, right? You're done training, golly. Right? And so stress <laughs> obviously went up. And what they found was, is that those who handled it the best, meaning they performed as good as they have or better, mm -hmm. had a longer quiet eye duration. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I realize I haven't described what that meant. So on the gun itself, they had a resting final fixation. And a fixation just means that they lock their eyes on a place, whether that's the rim of the basket or, or whatever for a longer period of time prior to a critical movement, a critical part of the skill, the trigger work, right? So mm -hmm. other things have been done with the quiet eye like this. So I'm gonna look at the camera so you can see, is that they took people who are really elite shooters and not elite shooters, and they found that elite shooters were looking at the target and bringing the presentation up. So therefore, they had a quiet eye. They were resting in that fixation. They were keeping their eye in a certain spot. But okay. the not elite shooters were doing stuff like this, looking at the site, then it comes up and firing, looking mm. at the site. And instead of there it is, there it is. So in the articles on my website, uh, uh, please just go to it. Uh, you know, there will be the uh, ILETA. It's the... Uh, I-L-E-E-T-A, International Law Enforcement Educators Training, right? So there's a couple, there's a, there's a three article set, but there's two on it. And it talked about, remember the draw stroke you were doing? Yes. Just having you do? 
well, why was I doing that versus this angle is because you're going to start breaking, looking for the quiet eye. I want to leverage everything. If I have to shoot soon, I'm already on sights, on trigger, on target, and finishing that shot faster, more accurately, as is evidenced by a pack timer, versus something where I can't see that. So I'm leveraging the physical motion to help me in a self-defense situation for quick shots without uh, confirmation of sight because it's I've got someone this big, you know, within this distance. Or if I needed to, I'm already on it. And now when I reach my extension, I'm able to fire sooner because I haven't, I'm utilizing the principles of the quiet eye, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. So that comes into play when I'm just turning to look and see, do I see what am I, what is my gaze behavior, which is what you do humbly. I've, I've only done EP twice, am I, right? But which is what you're doing all the time. But I am a police officer. It's kind of the same right. idea. It's just, right. we're looking for different things with different goals. You know, I'm, I'm scanning a crowd. What do you perceive? I'm looking at someone's hand, hand, belt, line, neckline. So whole person, what's going on with them? You're getting that feel for it. Is this right or not? Is this right? Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Hand, hand. Well, when I look at a hand, remember when we, we talked about our visual degree of angle, right? So if you, if you extend your arm and you put up your thumbnail, I've got a peer reviewed or journal here somewhere that says it's about three degrees of visual angle. Well, that is the only thing you can see clearly. So in this room right now, if I put my thumb, if I extend my arm and I cover that light socket to my eye, I'm yeah. only covering this much of it, just this little half of it, right? But I see, I feel like I see everything around there, but due to the rods and cones in your eye, which we dove into for about 15 minutes in the training and to, right. so that you understood it tangibly, that is the only piece I can see clearly. So if someone were to come around that corner right now, how do I know what's exactly in their hand? And how do you know if you don't train in a moment of stress, when someone all of a sudden appears to go stop or something to buy you a moment to enact your what needs to live at unconscious competence, right in the back of, you know, in your, your head somewhere, hand, hand, whole person, belt line, neckline, while presenting that firearm and then presenting that firearm where they can get at it versus... Mm -hmm now uh, into a retentional type position because once again i'm buying that moment to make a proper decision on is this a shoot or not all that stuff comes together and to bring it back around to my hugely pontificated point right now <laughs> is, is that, oh God, is that you got it right ken murray talking about concepts like the quiet eye things of that nature what i didn't know i didn't know about good training you got to slow it all down yeah. and practice it on purpose. But now the next time we get together, because you understand what I'm talking about, and more importantly, you understand not because I said it was correct. You know your grip yeah. and your trigger. Not, not because it was working that one day, but that cell in your tailbone, right, also <laughs> knows that that's the one that that's it for me and why. So then we can just start running a lot more, you know, get a lot further. We could have done all that zoomy stuff, but then to come back, like you said, what did you actually learn? Can you yeah, replicate right. it without me being there, making those tweaks and fixes? Right. My purpose is to get myself out of a job so that you're, you're doing it yourself. Yeah. And I just said, I just that to me. No, you're great. And this is odd. This is what it's for, man. The long answers are what we want. And we could have done all that zoomy stuff, but it wouldn't have meant enough to us, I don't think, to really even stick, like the meanings we would have walked away with. Um, you know, because I love how you get us to kind of define, build on what we have, you know, and, and define um, things for ourselves, even as we go through learning. It was like totally different. That's why I wanted people to realize how effective this whole paradigm of training, you know, rather than like just being like yelling at people on the range, knife handed, you know what I mean? And like, do it faster, do it harder. It's like, no, this was a very intelligent approach that I, um, I'm not surprised it was 500 times percent increase, you know, um, with these types of methods being used. Well, let's dig into background a little bit. Uh, you know, where you come from, what have you done? Folks always love to hear that stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So I guess 
the reason I do this compressed stuff is because I learned it from the guy who invented it. Uh, and once again, there's articles on my website if you want to know yeah. the actual history. There was three guys involved in that, really. Mm -hmm. The main one was a man named Paul Castle, and he came up with the CAR, Center Axis Relock System. But he had myopia. He, he had bad eyes. And so, and so he held the gun in close. Um, he did some cool stuff, uh, won the NATO pistol championships uh, two years in a row until they stopped holding it. Uh, he was an English cop. And uh, he was a unique New York, right? He was, he was a very unique individual, that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And he was just really good at it. And, uh, you know, nobody did more of it than I did. And unfortunately, he got cancer. And uh, mm -hmm. prior to his getting cancer, he had already, already kind of passed on the lineage. You know, I was, the, I was the next in line, so to speak, that type of idea. Yeah. Um, and then interestingly enough, uh, uh, well, Natural Tactical uh, got its name center axis relock right and his and paul castle's company saber tactical and then there's another hand uh i trained with a man um uh, one of my well what absolutely one of my mentors and i'm proud to say a, a good friend uh uh it, it, kelly warden right so he's a physical combatives fellow uh, and so uh he has natural spirit international and so you know he's the blade master of modern arnis and all these very cool things and very very talented individual within the martial arts i should say and yeah. so uh, I brought the two of them together uh, because I wanted martial arts people to get an introdu introduction to close quarter gun protectional stuff. Because really, like uh, uh, Kelly Warden says it himself, uh, uh, you know, like uh, firearms are self-defense, right? I mean, martial arts is there absolutely and, and these fighting, but, you know, the great equalizer. Sam Colt put a put a gun in their hand, right? You know that kind of thing. So, so uh, I, I brought them together in this bullet and blade symposium, and uh, uh, we ran a few of those. And this uh, we're going way back actually right now. Okay. And, so, and so they told me it was sitting in uh, uh, we were in uh, Antioch, Tennessee, just outside uh, Nashville, where Paul's house was, and and uh, Kelly uh, Warden was there, and myself. And they said, you know, you're you do what we do and you do it very well uh but you know we can't do what each other does and we'd like you to formally try and put this together into something uh the short version of that conversation and so i said okay well uh you know saber tactical and natural spirit international natural tactical put them together and that's how that got its name and uh, under the under these two mentors of mine later on i stumbled across many other people uh, uh as i said ken murray of the reality based yeah. training association he wrote that book and, and the rest of it so that was where the real formal process and talking and thinking came from in the meantime yeah i mean i uh, 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 we have been a 19 year police officer. I've, I've, you know, things on and on that way as well. But what gives me the, I mean, I, 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 thankfully I, I ask people as you did, you know, give me the gift mm -hmm. of your vulnerability, right? Yeah. Of, of going in saying, well, I'll give this a try, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And now we can have such a higher quality conversation because we went through those two days of, you know, day or two of training that the next time we get together, it will be far more zoomy right but but on purpose the fun stuff yeah right? with meaning yeah. right yeah with meaning exactly exactly how do you hold a gun you know with purpose right what is that purpose well where is your mind where is your muzzle and where is your finger that's how to apply those four cardinal rules of safety of which we break at least one or two of constantly you know that kind of thing right so, yeah awesome who would you say you are at your core man you know what is What's who's Jeff really on the deepest levels? <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> like, that's a, I would like to get this one out in the beginning of the in the of the interview. You know, that's a question and a half. Um, yeah, that's a question and a half. I don't know if your your audience wants me to dive that deep, but uh, oh, yeah. when I it took me a long time to really mm. think about my purpose and my craft, and yeah. uh, I'll, I'll talk about my craft. And then if, if you want to have me back on to talk about my purpose, I can do that. But <laughs> I mean, I'm so interested. So, yes. so I feel my craft to put it into so many words and the rest of it, you know, yeah. the ability to communicate with other people, right. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a meaningful way. So to, to help people uh, by offering them process and content in order to have them repeatedly thrive in deadly force situations, in high stakes and consequence situations. So yeah. I'm, I'm very good at that. 
Wow. Right. So what did we just unpack communication and learning? Yeah. So whether that's, if it's not deadly force, well, then it's actually easier. Right. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm in a, a, a chat right now with the ministry of the environment uh, mm. because they want to put some courses together and things like that. And I'm going there. There are other subject matter experts there and I'm getting yeah. hired to go there and facilitate the learning. So I'm not even a subject matter expert. I'm the learning guy. If that makes mm. sense. So, you know, I'm very interested in that too. So whether I, you know, the way that Ken Murray has taught me is, is that I can go and uh, I can take a a doctor right out of surgery, a surgeon who just walks out of surgery and help them debrief that uh, because of the approach, the Socratic approach, not knowing anything about it, nor am I saying that I do, but I can, given the, the, the conceptual method for and framework for thinking is how to is how to go about that so anyway so my craft what i'm really good at is yeah. helping people via process and content right to repeatedly thrive because i'm not interested in you surviving once, once and then becoming an alcoholic divorcee or going to prison forever or whatever it is right right i want to help you to understand how to recover and repeatedly be able to thrive optimally in situations of high stakes and pressure wow that's awesome. I love how um, well thought out that is. I don't know if you guys are listening to this, but it's like, you you, you know, it just, I, I recognize your intelligent approaches to all these things, man. I really, really appreciate that. You know, it was, um, and then someday we, I'd love to d- dive into the deeper stuff because that's the stuff that drives everything else. You know, that's awesome. Let's see here. We kind of touched on the car system a little bit um yeah it was the original the original system why is it that that we moved on from it well because we added we've we've evolved it uh is it still the base in there yeah it it totally is i will always give credit where credit is due um but it would be a misnomer to say that the way that it was taught and conceptualized is the way that it is now taught conceptualized you know do i shoot with my arms extended absolutely i do uh is it the only way is that compressed thing is it is it uh, do this or not? No, absolutely not. You know, it's just, uh, as you as you said yourself, uh, you know, it's, it's. I mean, the situation dictates the tactic. The yeah. people are always moving their gun in. There is a system that works. And you have to admit, when we were doing, I can't remember who it was, but I, I must have had somebody on that day, uh, you know, grabbing at the gun and I take it back with one hand, you know, that yeah. kind of idea, right? And so like yeah. that is a simple thing to do once you've learned the biomechanics of it and mm-hmm. now to create a cue card contextually relevant as to why I'd be doing it coming around this corner or doorway or whatever that might be, yeah. you know, that those are the moments that matter. Those are the moments that get us in the paper when they go sideways. And right. those are the things that we focus on. So we, everything is reverse engineered from the worst case scenario. You know, everybody can do a reload uh, and rack the, rack no, i don't have one to rack but and rack the gun out here mm-hmm. but uh, you know we reverse engineered from right up with the bad guy doing all our skills as i've talked to you about and now what am i doing there well you now know what i just did right owning right. the grip again right straight back on again but no one else would even have those eyes to understand it so right. yeah yeah exactly what would you say about your approach to decision making um, under stress in stressful situations in these lethal encounter situations what would be your approach to that uh well it's everything mm-hmm. right, so that's everything uh i yeah. i try to buy you more of your attention more of your want and more of your synapses connecting by yeah. making you shit hot and awesome with a gun or whatever else really quickly and we do we do that i mean like i, I put put my money where my mouth is, you know, like all the rest of it. Right. But what I'm really concerned with is all these uh, more nebulous, right. These more not so tangible, like decision-making under stress. What the heck does that even mean? Well, that right. means I got to go into force on force training. Right. And I got to get a, a hood on my head and I got to get, uh, uh, you know, gotcha game, trunk monkey, ninja things. And I got to feel I'm a little sick just thinking about it going into it because we've all done that right and, yeah. and uh, like i said that's where ken murray and his five ten percent difference mm-hmm. is everything 
Right? And I point towards him by saying that because it's easy to say that there's this thing out here, you know, go read his book, go whatever. But, you know, I, uh, when I, I, I stalked him until he became my friend and now I work for him, right? <laughs> for, for, a, for a reason, because I didn't know what I didn't know about it. So um, what does that mean? Well, that means in order to contextualize and to make pattern a recognition, right? So you, you ever heard like schema, right? We talked about mental yeah. models. Absolutely. And what the mental model? Well, a mental model, just an internal representation for something, a trigger, how a trigger works. I have a mental model for how doorknobs work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things like I haven't seen all the doors in the world, but I know that if there's a bar, I should probably push it. If I see hinges on that side, it's this side, you know, like a, 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 a process. Well, schema or pattern recognition, there's a really cool guy you can Google, his, uh, uh, his name's Dr. Dr. Gary Klein. And he's got recognition prime decision making. It's something that I've, I've looked into quite a studied quite a bit, uh, and even formally with uh, Four Science. If you've heard of those guys, uh, oh, yeah. Four Science Research. And so he's got some cool stuff he's done uh, where he's talking about expert performers. And so uh, you know that's exactly it. You know, take a uh, take an NFL player or something like that. You know, we're we're being asked to perform to a level. Uh, where, you know, we have no ability to check the replay and we have no ability to, you know, and, and here uh, they are. Slow it down or nothing. It's just go. It's, right? all, it's always live. <laughs> We're always oh. recording live, you know? And I mean, I know, I know nothing about professional NFL. I really don't, right. you know, but I know that those people are paid a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of people doing the supporting them with research. I'm just looking down there because I've got like there's this uh, motor learning and performance Bible. Right. And it's all about how to teach physical skills, motor learning. Well, we're not yeah. following it in the gun training world that I've seen anyway, uh, yeah. but they're following it there because it works. I know that I'm going to be coming across you at on game day, you specifically, and I can watch film on you specifically. And I know it's in a well-lit environment and I know what day it's going to be on. And I know I can prep for it. Right. You know, my fight's going to be on all the rest of it. And, uh, and you can still fake me out. And I was training for you at you, the time yeah. and I knew it. Right. Yeah. You know, like, so, so how is it that we're trying to make all these decisions when our attention, remember how we talked about attention being like the number one resource? Like, I think that's the current, attention is the currency of our age. People are so distracted by it, right? Uh, not, to man. Man, not to mention the amount, we're just not used to focusing for long periods of time. Right. So what I'm actually doing and what the soldiers were doing with those other soldiers, 500% increase, you know, yeah. They're, they're teaching them, you know, that not quite getting it, we should be up here on the curve. And then all of a sudden they surpass. But there was that longer period where those synapses weren't quite getting it. Right? Yeah. 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 And if you're willing to go through that, uh, because how many times do we quit? Because we want you know, the expert result, or we want the whatever thing or something like that, you know, so then you yeah. talk about motivation, you're talking about um, heuristics, just a fancy word for shortcuts, uh, yeah. and, and things like that. So pattern recognition, you, you're talking about use of force, it was mm -hmm. your question, uh, decision making, mm -hmm. pattern recognition, to, uh, to see something unfolding, and know what steps to take to gain advantage get a final firing grip on your gun right yeah. what the heck is a final firing grip well as high up in the tang as possible or back strap why because a recoil we know uh, and then around it what do you mean around it bro that was a whole yeah. 15 minute was talk whole... wasn't it mm -hmm. right you know so when i'm shooting the gun it's all cockeyed in my hand but because of the size of my thumb and the size of that Glo well glock ish whatever this thing is handle yeah. That's where I handle recoil the best, not dead in line with my radius. And then I said that with you guys on the course, and that's one thing. But then what did I do next is I took you out. I demonstrated it. I had you demonstrate it. And if you could dive back in or maybe you've got because you had a lot of GoPro video at the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, There's a review coming up. You will notice the formal process I used. I had you go internal broad and then in internal narrow as you were shooting 
Mm -hmm. You were developing a richer mental model. You were gaining feedback where you had none before. Right. And then we were doing, remember, recoil control is one thing. Recoil management is another thing, right? Recoil mm -hmm. control, the same point of aim, recoil management, using that recoil for a new point of aim. Well, how right. do you teach that until you teach the first? Exactly. So mm -hmm. the next thing you know, 30 minutes later and only a couple of mags because spending any more, any more ammo, you, you can't, you had to slow it down. Yeah. You had to slow it down. But now that you've done that, you now don't go, well, Jeff, this Canadian dude said that this is what I should do. You're making it lodge into the long-term, two types of long-term memory. The long-term memory you cannot think of consciously when you're under stress, it's mm -hmm. going to live there. And more importantly, confidence, competence loop, right? I love that. Right? It's, yeah. it's the vicious circle we're trying to perpetuate. You know it works for you because you have now seen it happen so you believe in it it lodges right. in there under i'm under like i could die this is what i'm gonna do why am i gonna do it because it works Constantly. not because that dude said so and he was special forces whatever and made it yeah you still might have that cell in your tailbone going but can i do it but right. is it good for me you know, that type of thing, right? Because those, right. those principles live out there. And we go to those people all the time because we want to believe because it's important. My life's important. My job, my career, you know, right. the, the person I'm protecting, et cetera, is important. Yeah. But what if you don't quite conceptualize it to that entire level of your being to not sound too hokey, right? right. But, right, then you're going to question it or you're not going to be dead execute dead. on it because you don't believe in it right this confidence comes from experience with yourself you know and what you know you can execute on right that i love i love how many amazing life lessons were woven into the, into the tactical instruction that day it was so good man the confidence loop you know yeah. that's why arrogance is so dangerous it's inaccurate confidence you know well and there you go so if you want to there's a formal graph on that called the dunning kruger yeah. effect uh mm -hmm. you know uh, living on the pal uh, the, living on the peak of mount stupid we could talk about that another time but you can just google yeah. it right yeah. yeah it's very cool and it's so it's a formal thing it's actually a scientific principle you know that we really? start learning a little bit yeah. and we think our skill level and ability is way up here and then all of a sudden if we keep at it we realize how much we didn't know yeah and how much and then there's the formal climb towards the guruhood or whatever, that kind of yeah, idea. Like the actual accurate understanding climb. Yeah, this is interesting because I, I have a few people that I've been working with throughout the course of my lifetime. And I see, I've seen this happen. You know, it's like you get in, you have a little bit of progress and you're like, I'm up here now, you know. And now I, I you know, I've learned to kind of look out for that and be like, no, this, I find with most high quality things, there's so much more work, at least when you start choosing goals and targets, there's so much more work than you ever thought there was in order to achieve them when you're beginning. You know, it's like, I want to have like an internet business or I want to, whatever your goal is, you know, it's like, you're like, I can just set up a website and, you know, maybe get some marketing and this thing will start flowing. And then you get in there and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a universe in here, you know? Um, and, and so Absolutely. that's really interesting to hear about that graph. <laughs> that's and that's exactly it. health yeah. health working out oh so i do the bodybuilding workout oh so i yeah. do the keto diet oh so i mm -hmm. no man the more you know the more you realize and that's what i think you, uh, we were talking about as well that to yeah. be able to thin slice just to use a term that's you know from some great books on the shelf i'm sure you've right. got them as well sure. be able to thin slice those things and apply them as tools but knowing uh the real the real subtlety versus mm -hmm. i'm on this diet now or I, I work out at this time or i whatever right you know and that kind of stuff yeah yeah uh, i post this many things and and on instagram i don't know whatever right i mean right. i have no idea about that but <laughs> outstanding what would you say about about health and things like that because you're you're kind of exemplary to me um how would you say that your habits in your life with regards to health have kind of helped you perform and would you have any kind of advice that you would recommend to guys that are kind of struggling in that area yeah well once again my mentor so in that problem. area happens to, <laughs> happens to be my best friend on earth right so my, yeah. my wife uh, adriana is uh and she's got a story i mean doctor got cancer 
did the regular cancer treatments that took destroyed her kidneys and things and cancer came back and it was a, it was a bad point in our life uh and then you know started uh, contacted some other specialists and people and uh you know they shared with her research and things and she started going down another path it's like functional medicine and uh uh, now she's invested in that. So uh, not not in the in the medical model in Canada. So she doesn't have her license to do that because she's she doesn't believe in it, simply put. Uh, but now she's got clients all over the world where they're coming to her with, you know, here's my blood work. Um, you know, I'm a woman who wants to have kids and I can't because I have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, for example. Yeah. And, you know, she's had several. And uh, uh, the next thing you know, they do these strategies, but it's based on their blood work right mm -hmm. it's not it's like yeah, there are some general principles but everything is based off of what does your blood work say and it's not your the actual blood. blood work not not the packaged one size fits all totally. kind of uh stuff we get in other arenas right so you go to a physiotherapist and you yeah. get this 37 million photocopied program <laughs> right everyone yeah <laughs> that everybody gets that's right it's just not, yeah. So what are the big things in health? Um, you know, uh, I get it from her uh, and she has helped me tremendously. I didn't know. I mean, I was, I was a fat kid, you know, I was, uh, you were I was a fat kid. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Really? That's I, awesome. I, weighed, I was a fat kid too. That's <laughs> I, I weighed more than I do now, uh, you know, oh. back in grade eight and grade nine. Uh, and I, I mean, I couldn't do 10 push-ups, right? Like at all, I couldn't do a chin, that's for sure. And I can do 10 push-ups and a chin-up now. So it's like, it's like the, the composition has changed. Yeah. But, um, you know, and then I was skinny fat, you know, I went out, uh, wanted to be a British soldier. I wanted to do the parachute regiment P company, right? Which is this mm -hmm. very hard thing to do and, and these tests and stuff. And I didn't realize what I didn't know. I, I was skinnier then because of super amounts of exercise in that but I wasn't eating well and uh, I was skinny fat, meaning there was a lot of uh, visceral, right? A lot of, a lot of fat on the inside, you know, that kind of thing. And then right, a lot of mass, but like, yeah, I mean, or, or thin, but no quality mass, less quality mass. Absolutely. I could hit you with my Adam's apple from here, you know, that kind of thing. Back then. <laughs> I, was, I was 178 pounds when I got out of there. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Anyway. So point being is that I would say, uh, instead of chasing, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever, uh, I'm on this diet or that thing or whatever it was, you right. know, she really helped me to say like, you know, eat good quality food, right? So eat high quality food. And number one is good quality protein. Yeah. And so I'm not scared of that. That's for sure. And so, you know, like we're talking grass fed, you know, cuts and, and, uh, and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, and then, and to, and to build out from there. But I, we, we talked about it kind of offline yeah. in the class, you know, because you had some you had some really great questions and, and um, you know, that I work out and I train like mm -hmm. a third of what I used to. Uh, right. And I'm getting just as far, if not farther in my learning and in my ability to learn and things like that. Now, that, that's also because I've trained the ability to focus. Remember, we talked mm -hmm. about concentration grids and things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the same time as well, even physically, you know, like, so, you know, my back squats back up again, I, I bulged a couple of discs through injury and things, but, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, but I'm doing less of it, but I've tripled down on recovery. And by recovery, I do mean thinking well, moving well, eating well, sleeping well, right? Number one, you're not going to lose weight. You're not going to gain muscle. You're not going to do anything good with your cortisol, testosterone or anything else. If you're not going to bed. That's, I mean, that's just a fact. So I've got yeah. a, I don't have it on right now, but I wear an aura ring. I, I know there's whoop bands and things as well. Uh, you know, I'm, I do, whether I'm cold plunging or not or something, but I'm, I'm looking at my graph, you know, I can open it up on here if you, and I'm not pumping aura ring, but I'm pumping yeah, no, the fact just... that I have a metric to know that when yeah. I go to, you know, so last night, for example, come on. So last night, there's my graph. Right. So total sleep, eight hours and 57 minutes. But I had to be in bed for 10 hours and 17 minutes for that because wow. I suck at efficiency. Wow. So, uh, yeah. But there I was. I was able to get two hours and eight minutes of deep sleep. Whoop, and there's the deep sleep on the graph down there. OK, I right. did that through stopping eating two hours before bed and cold plunging in the day. Right. This and so thing keeps coming up, man. And I just 
Oh my gosh, I just haven't got myself to a place to do it yet. <laughs> well, and so there's like three reasons and optimizations on that. Uh, there's, yeah. there's certain reasons how and what and why to do it, in my opinion, based on the research I've done in that. And so, but I have a metric to measure it or not too. Really? So yeah, well, exactly. Because I'm measuring it here, you know, like through heart rate variability, through my deep sleep increase. Because remember deep sleep, remember I said neuroplasticity back at the beginning here. Uh, yeah. you, need, you need what alertness focus and rest but especially deep sleep i think it's stage two sleep off okay. the top of my head and if yeah, you're not yeah. getting that then you're not learning the, the motorical right the motor learning and all the things that are needing to be fixed from the deadlifts you did it's not happening no, so no. i'm optimizing that end of it which i sure as shit was not when it was right. A little bit of whiskey and more pull-ups, right? You know, and, <laughs> whiskey, well, and that's kind of why I brought it up is because I've just noticed certain human beings pull ahead in a more healthy way and perform at higher levels that focus more on these things, you know. And since I've really these last few years started focusing much more on my health and my habits um, and my my diet and all these little. And, and psychology and even my spiritual development i just bring so much more to the fight on so many levels so much more effectively and i'm just a better leader and so i, I love talking about these things that like really drive our ability to perform you know at these levels you know so that's awesome awesome stuff yeah that's i couldn't agree with that more you know so if you're talking about the sexy cool stuff which is right you know, executing at a high level on demand with that. Yeah, that's exactly it. But the ability to turn it on and right. turn it off, mm -hmm. it's, it's emotional. It's arousal control. Yeah. That's a funny word to say, but <laughs> right. It's, it's emotional. Turn, yeah. I need to upregulate it because I got to fight. Look at this dude in front of me right now. Right. And it's off. <laughs> yeah. And now I got to, and now I got to turn it back down. Uh, you know, that kind of idea. And yeah, really like you can think well, you can move well, you can you can sleep well and then you can uh, uh you know like eat and hydrate right like those things as well but how how often do we think about thinking well remember that chat love you could, this you could shoot a you could shoot a group there and a shoot a group there and right. then boo, there's that one what yeah. are you going to go home thinking about 300 site alignment site press trigger or that one that one, <laughs> 100%. if you remember, that's how we started talking about things. What does that one represent? Well, okay, so failure, for example. Well, what yeah. is failure? Failure is an opportunity to grow, this, that, and the other. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm glad you're saying that. How do you do that, though? Mm. Right? So when you're in a cold tub, and the environment is driving you to go, this is not awesome. I want out. This is not optimal. <laughs> I hate it's this. Not, it's not just about the decision to get into the tub. That is absolutely there again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, so there's discipline with that. But when you're in the environment that yeah. is driving your amygdala, your lizard brain, and your want to move, and your yeah. diaphragm, and all the rest of this, this nervous system you cannot control consciously, you yeah. can, through breath, top down consciously say this is what i'm going to focus on and now that i've lost that clavicle and i'm doing a reload with my weak hand which we never call it that because we're right. meeting <laughs> and i'm going to external narrow focus on what it is i need to do next in order to save me not internal focus at the time of stress and pressure right oh, as to what's going on in here because that leads to not optimal decision making remember those biathletes right yeah. the ones who did better had a longer quiet eye well they think it also has something to do this is my opinion this is these are the, these are the phds right with, with handling stress external focus helps you handle stress so now in the tub, we can external and internal focus, but the point right. being is that I'm actually practicing at that moment diaphragmatic control, which helps me then get more deep sleep because I do that before bed, which helps me then when I wake up to have a simple, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but when you, you're, uh, of course, you're not mouth breathing, you're nose breathing, I hope, and if people aren't doing that, please read like Patrick McEwen's The Oxygen Advantage and Things like that. Huge that leaps guys, forward. He's dropping them like that. <laughs> <laughs> Huge leaps forward in my sleep quality as well. Tape, you know, tape your mouth, piece of tape over your mouth so you don't melt. Anyway, 
We can talk about that if you like. It's crazy, but I guarantee it works, right? Okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> and so what I'm saying here is, is that you know, it's, it's also about these frameworks of metrics to understand, which we can practice in these moments. You need to practice that circuitry, catching yourself in traffic, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. what's happening? Am I being driven by the environment? Absolutely, I am. Look at what this jackass just did to me with, the, with that lane change, right? Oh, yeah. But now what does that mean for my cortisol? What does that mean for my decision-making? What does that mean for the environment, for every cell in my body that I'm going to now do what with and, and how, right? Not to mention external execution of, of skills. So uh, you can, as I said with you, and I, I preach it because it's true, we can train this stuff on purpose and we're not doing it we're talking about bang, 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 our splits in our el presidente that's great right but are you talking about where were your eyes well they were on the target all right where on the target well three thousand dollar glasses and eye trackers is what they use there <laughs> right and they knew exactly where they were so when we're walking through a crowd of people where the the uh the guru of ep is looking mm -hmm. i don't even know yeah. And more than that, so that goes for any, you know, uh, Wayne Gretzky in hockey. I can, I can see where his head is, but right. where's that thumbnail actually looking? Number two, what is, that, what is that EP guru actually seeing and perceiving to drive their next behavior? Then what do they know how to do to gain advantage? Is it a final firing grip? Is it a half a step forward on their client? Is it a da 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 Like whatever that might be. Then we get into the tactics. Well, that's what, so we bring it back around to decision-making. So I take an expert decision-maker and that's is what people hire me to do, right? I'm not the, the EP guru, but I come in and I talk to them in front of everyone and I completely break down how, what, where, when, and why they're doing what they're doing. And it's awesome. no, it's no, um, you know, some subject matter experts are like, well, but I'm the subject matter expert. And you totally are. It's just no offense, but you just haven't studied how to get it into their head as right. well as I have. And you have to admit what I what I really excel at is having you pause for a moment and really think more about what you thought you already knew. Thought you knew, yeah. Right? Which is the most dangerous stuff in your head is the stuff you think that you know. <laughs> like, you know, it's like I'll take, you know, and that's why I try to just come from a space of like, I am always learning. I know that I know very little. Um, because man, when you think you know something, it's just it's, you better know it because it's a dangerous moment. It can be a very blinding concept, you know. Um, that's awesome. I think to get back to that, the the cold showers, the the plunging, I think there's so much to gain in terms of emotional intelligence and understanding how to manage that stress and all those different things, kind of what exactly what you said. But I mean, it's like, how do you train for life, you know? <clears throat> and I try to do a lot of this in the gym when I'm under, when I'm placing myself deliberately in stressful situations, under the weight, with my cardio, I'm constantly training my emotional world and making sure I can perform, you know, no matter what's going on. But I just feel like, and I hate it because I hate cold water. <laughs> I got some PTSD from my dad being like, Turn it on the shower on the cold when I was little. What are you doing in here, son? You need to take a shower like a man, you know. But um, it was a good time. But uh, yeah, that's huge, man. I think there's so much. There's a higher level of emotional training, triggering your autonomic nervous system, and getting yourself to a solid state no matter what's happening. Yeah, you know, like you're saying, yeah. there's so much there to be taken away. Well, I mean, um, people are doing that, right? They're doing a yeah. cold shower. Now, there's, a, there's the scientific research is cold plunging, usually. Although I found that there's benefit, as is evidenced by, cold. like, aura ring tracking mm -hmm. for showering as well, right? So cold but, plunging is different. This is like you're getting into a tank of coldness or what? Are we yeah, doing? like it's, it's a bathtub. Right. Like it's it's submerged in about the yeah, items anyway. Yeah. But I'm just saying okay. if you want to start thin slicing, just to talk about the member, uh, the, the tool, right, mm -hmm. the tool and the method. Remember what I said at the beginning of the podcast? Exactly. Yeah. Well, now we're talking about cold plunging as a tool. But what's the what's the process to evaluate and think about it? Because there's there's a few reasons to do it. And it's mm -hmm. not just getting in there and suffering because I didn't realize that I'm actually a very inefficient breather. I don't utilize, I, I overuse oxygen. People are like, what? 
right? I overuse breath. And until I met Patrick McEwen, I got his book over there. I can grab it if you want, like the oxygen advantage. And then I started stalking him and, and hey, what's your, what, how do, what do you think about this? And how do you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I didn't realize that you could binge on oxygen and be inefficient with it. I didn't realize that carbon dioxide is a hugely important thing. That's why I'm always drinking those carbonated waters when I'm doing things like this, talking so much, therefore mouth breathing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hacking, although I hate the word hack because I want to live life to its fullest, right? I don't want to just hack it. But so cold plunging as well. So if you're getting in that and you're just <laughs> suffering through it like that, you're not getting the benefit out of it. You could be by top down diaphragmatic capture and control. Are you Wim Hof breathing or not Wim Hof, Tumo breathing? I mean, he made it extremely nice. popular and, and bless him for doing so. It, it took breath work into a, uh, a big, uh, it made it very popular, right? Which it needs yeah. to be, it should be, which should be teaching this to every child, right? Um, and, uh, but is it, am I trying to sympathetic fight or fight, fight and flight? Or am I trying to parasympathetic? rest and digest to use those terms, right? So there's a whole bunch of thin slicing we can do just to the concept of cold regulation. And yeah. then having you said specifically what you just said, I got a little PTSD from when I was younger, da, 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 right. Absolutely. So now I would, of course not, I would do it offline with you, right? But we would then go into what do you have anchored or associated to it that's in your past that's yeah. actually driving feelings, thoughts, emotions, and all the rest of it. Remember when I talked about the, when I cut those fingers off on that, on that uh, saw and how that I couldn't think of or hear a saw or smell fresh cut wood without having intrusive thoughts and physiological response in my body and how yeah. I use breathing to de-link that and, and anyway and kind of mentally body armor myself for some of the other horrible things that happened in life later that yeah. kind of stuff. so these are all some extremely high quality conversations that yeah. we're, we're just we're just scratching the surface of Right. Exactly. And uh, and so that's what I say. I do a third of what I used to, but I tripled down on all this other stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's not. Yeah. And it's not like you need to go take a Ph.D. in it or anything. It's just a matter of thinking about it. And if you can get into how you think about these things, you're going to be better at it. Yeah. Right. Like, you, yeah. Yeah. So and there's a formal way of doing it. My sole purpose is mm -hmm. anyone that I train with to get better than me in a half the amount of time. And I hope that they're, that, that's the whole point, right? Uh, you know, like I, I got here uh, and yeah, I mean, and it's true, like in, in martial arts, because, you know, I have a dojo right under Kelly Warden and we're training and we're that. And my guys are getting, are getting to a level uh, faster than I did, which is great. It shows that the instruction is, is working, right? It shows that that process is working. You have a dojo? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm a, okay, what's this yeah. about, man? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, like I said, so the, uh, Kelly Warden, Grandmaster, right? Natural Spirit International uh, under Remy Prasis, uh, right? So Filipino, uh, Filipino uh, stick and blade master, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? And awesome. he's got non-classical non Kung Fu. And, and yeah. uh, uh, I mean, through him, I've met, uh, yeah, a lot of other amazing uh, practitioners. He's got this camp every year. It's called Water and Steel. We should, well, we'll meet at it. Let's go to it, you know, September okay. long weekend, Labor Day. But anyway, Sweet. point being, is that that's what I'm really good at. And then, but people come to me for this stuff, which is cool. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you should see, a, you know, we'll manhandle each other in that and, and, uh, and have a great time doing it. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Okay. That's it. Or we'll definitely talk more about that offline. Um, and then last few questions, we're getting winded down. What's the hardest lesson you've learned in the field? Probably just that uh, no matter how much I prepare, mm. that, uh, yeah, just shit happens. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of chance. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, you know, it's yeah, it'll change you forever. And uh, interpersonal human aggression, probably the last real phobia. And violence is a toxic, mm. sticky, corrosive environment that will change you forever. And it's okay if you're okay with that as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just because you did certain things that some people see as being very extreme or whatever, that kind of idea, you know, that sometimes we take on fault or we look for things. I'll communicate better with a story. So I was talking to someone who 
uh, 9-11, right? So he's at the base of the towers of 9-11 mm-hmm. and he's a regular dude. And uh, he's watching people literally jump to their deaths, right? Instead of burn. No. And, uh, you know, so the, uh, uh, they set up a bunch of showers and everything for everyone. And he said that, um, he said that everyone there was having a shower and he said like everyone crapped himself, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he didn't. Okay. He didn't. And he thought, imagine this now, what's wrong with me? Right. That everyone else had this reaction to the most horrible thing that I've I've never even thought of before in my life, but I didn't have that reaction. And he thought something was wrong with him. Isn't that, isn't that, and until he met a guy named uh, Colonel Grossman, right? So uh, on killing, right? On combat, wrote those books. Great dude. Really great dude. Uh, in fact, he helps me uh, with my writing. So thank you, Colonel. Really? Um, yeah, we uh, got our last symposium. I got to. Oh, really? Him. Yeah, yeah, great. So, uh, so until he met him, he didn't realize that you know going back, uh, he had his morning bowel movement <laughs> prior mm-hmm. to, and that's probably the reason why he didn't have that reaction. Wow. And so I, I shared that saying that isn't it weird how we will look to try to understand and compare to other people and things, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, you know, I'm really good at violence. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not a popular thing to say. Right. right. And uh, luckily I have these moral codes and, and checks and balances and things like that in there. Um, and so, yeah. So what's one of the hardest lessons or the hardest lesson I learned is that uh, I guess it maybe I could put it down to thinking well again, but mm-hmm. when you are trying to help someone and your resources are fleeting and, you know, one of the, one of the maxims, coolest lines I ever saw in a movie back when I was in high school and I put it on my, on my locker in high school, first line out of this movie, you've had your whole life to prepare for this moment. Why aren't you ready? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's, that is a great one to put up there in front of every protector yeah yeah anyway so sorry i went a little uh a little emotional there but uh well no i'm not sorry i'm not sorry at all no no. that's the good stuff man you asked so there it is yeah no i just i could tell it was going to be something good and real and i know that you're so capable of communicating it that was i was like this is going to be meaty and it totally was um, and you said so many high level things in terms of um, that, I mean, you're really good at violence, but it's okay. You know, it's, 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 we need good people to be capable of these things. And it's not an evil thing to be good at the tool of violence, because this is something we have to win at in order to uh, maintain the beautiful world that we've, we've created and hope that our, you know, children can live in, you know, as my peeks in the door here you know so um but then also to understand the corrosive nature of violence and that it is it is uh just not an honorable thing really you know i i um it's not a it's it's bad you know in so many ways you know but like you know i feel like for people with less experience sometimes they look at violence and they unfortunately can be seduced by some of the ideas they see in Hollywood and things like this and I feel like for those who know we're like guys <laughs> this is not a road we want to go down you know so um, I don't know what would you say about those things um yeah there's a lot there's a lot there, I, three things pop to mind I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one of them for sure uh, you know it's so it's the tool it's our, it's the tool we need to master. Exactly. So uh, I think it was Colonel Grossman again, if I'm, if I'm saying it right, but the, the, I just want to give credit where credit's due, right? Stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, um, but that idea, you know, uh, firemen put out fires, they put, you know, with, with water, right? So the tool is water. I mean, just Cole's notes, right? Idea. Uh, uh, yet, police officers or protect anyone, any civilian who's protecting themselves, anyone and everyone, it's violent. What do you, what do you, how do you stop violence? Well, not with water. Right. It's, it's with superior violence. Yeah. And so now we'd love to detect it ahead of time and deter it and all the rest of it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yet 
So what I'm saying is, is that the tool I'm trying, the environment is toxic. The yeah. tool itself is violence. So it's, it's not like I'm getting a recovery away from it. So it is all the more important, vital in my mind, and by mind, I mean, in my emotion, right? To understand how to think well about it and mm -hmm. recover from it properly. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we've all gone that. I've talked myself into more fights when I was a, a younger police officer. And, uh, and now, now that I'm ready, I mean ready. Right. Uh, I'm sure there was a time uh, during the weekend when I was, uh, when I was serious. Like, uh, what, what cell in my body, and I'm in my tailbone, as I say, every, every, I was congruent with my message, meaning... When I said stop, when I said, when I said whatever it was, every bit of my being hopefully told you and, uh, that I'm completely ready, right, and capable. Right. And so when I reached that point, which was an inside out thing, it wasn't an outside in. I mean, you can always act as if, but once my inside matched my outside and I was completely congruent, ready. Yeah. I never had to do business like a tenth of the time. It's very interesting. It, yeah. um, like we could go on a whole nother podcast going talking about that and that impact that it has on the world and, and being able to even achieve that, you know, and like the competencies it takes to even be able to achieve that congruence, you know, and that honest, uh, being able to communicate that honestly with yourself and the environment, <laughs> you know, uh, this is good stuff, man. We're going to have to do another episode for sure. Um, well, I would love to. So uh, I, I want to be respectful of your time as well. Uh, in order to give, because it's my first exposure to your audience, and, I, and I, I, I've been just gobbing up at, at the mouth here. So it's like, I want to give you something tangible. I want to give you something tangible. So uh, I have, uh, you remember how we talked about switching hands with the pistol, right? Because that's a thing that we should all know how to do. And I'm sure everybody understands how to put the pistol from one hand to the other. But I got a, a, a certain technique rock grip place uh mm -hmm. that uh, that is it and i would uh, i'm going to i took a uh, an edit out of uh, one of the videos i did for uh i ilfe uh the international law enforcement firearms instructors group uh mm -hmm. i did a i did an online training for them during covid and i took that little five minute how to change hands with the pistol while i'm inside of a vehicle uh out i'm going to stick it on instagram because you you're going to show me how to do that yeah, and uh, yeah. uh you know so because I'm, I'm doing a new instagram handle so you can go there for that free video get something tangible that you know you can you can uh, you know take with you if you so choose and the rest of it so I'm, I'm offering something physical as well as all this talking mental stuff yeah i love it and you guys we're gonna you guys have to train with jeff next time he is up here for sure one last closing question i can't let you get away without answering how would you like to be remembered brother what is it all for what's the what's the meaning in all this stuff that you're doing you know it's my favorite closing question mm -hmm. when people remember you what comes to mind well i'd be honored if they did uh, number one uh, right. I've, right. I've already won in life because uh because i have my wife uh you know my best friend and my biggest support and vice versa we're the best team mm -hmm. ever uh to be remembered I guess you, you kind of mean, I guess, not by my immediate loved ones and things like that. I would love for that to be, I would be honored for that to be uh, uh, in regards to the thoughts of how to help people become and perpetuate the best expression of themselves that they can be, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. faster, more optimal, better, faster, stronger, sooner. Yeah right all these limiting beliefs in our heads and things like that just cut through that stuff physical skills of course to do mm -hmm. with protecting our, our the good people in society absolutely i see tremendous value in that thank mm -hmm. you to all those you know who have dedicated themselves to that uh, and that's why I, I will always train civilians as well because they're the ones who are going to save my daughter in the next school uh, next mall shooting you know things like that and uh yeah anyway heck yeah awesome uh i we that's a lot like my mission that's so awesome it's like well, what you tell me here i'm sorry if everybody knows it but you know, yeah. share with me I'm... no really my purpose 
you know, I hope that when people look back at my life, they see what one imperfect man can do if he's just willing to give uh, that imperfection um, on the altar of progress every single day, you know, and everything I've been able to achieve has been with hard work and by the grace of God, you know, for just giving us this opportunity, this experience, this technology to navigate and work with, you know, so I'm just really all about empowering people, you know, on many different levels, um, primarily to be a protector, to be better protectors, because that's who I am organically, you know, and with these conversations, we do a lot of that and with the training, we do a lot of that, but even in, when it comes to the mind gear that helps us navigate this world, because everything comes out of that, you know, and, and the emotional intelligence. So yeah, crushing uh, boundaries and self-limiting thought processes, those kill me, you know, and those beliefs when I hear people say them out, out, out loud, like I, I just want to like stop them, you know, but we're all we're all growing and learning together. So yeah, man, I think we're still on the same page. I love this stuff. I have so much to learn from you. It's been such an honor, you know, and, and it's kind of like a whole new world. Like when I see you, I see how optimized you are in different areas, um, your intelligence, but the finished product of what you bring to bear in the classroom. Um, it's an honor that we're connected. And I'm looking forward to doing more cool things for sure. Well, yeah. it's, it's my honor. You know, we became fast friends and uh, I'm happy to say so. So it's, uh, Look forward to, you know, let's put something together for your viewers. Uh, I would I would be honored. Uh, let me know what that looks like. And I'd love to be on here again because this is just a good chat. <laughs> so. yeah. And I'm working with, yeah, and working with your wife as well is very already been pretty interesting. So she yeah. says you need to get her your uh, you need to get her your intake form. <laughs> Very in depth. It's very in depth. So you guys, you know, there's another asset there as well. We can put all this stuff in the in the notes below. So if you want to get a hold of Jeff, you know, want to have him out to train, you know, you and your cadre and, and all those different things. He does all that stuff, traveling and really just helping us learn better and think better and perform better. So yeah, thank please, you. you know, reach out. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, of course, usually it starts on Zoom because our pre-framing the information. We can get more out of in person when we do a little bit of here first to, to prep people, you know, that kind of stuff too. But yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, I look forward to whatever uh, we're going to come together and do. So that's great. And I'll be out in California. What is it? Second, third weekend in January 2022 for some training as well. So um, that'll be in San Diego. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again. We'll talk soon. See y'all out there. Boom. Boom. Yo, what up? I hope you guys really enjoyed that episode. Hey, listen, in order to get more out of the brand, I want to encourage you to go join us on our social media platforms and join us at protectornation.com. We post different types of content on our different platforms at different times. Uh, you'll get blog posts, you'll get videos, you'll get real world combat engagements and things like that. So stay plugged in in order to get the most out of the brand. In order to support us, also go to protectornation.com and buy something or join forces with me on Patreon. You'll scroll down the homepage and you'll see the link. Uh, anything you can give counts, you know, think about whatever you would lose in your cushions or like spend on McDonald's this month, five bucks a month, whatever it is. Uh, that helps. That helps us make the world a better place by making good people dangerous. Anyways, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. And I'll see you on the next piece of content, whether it's a video or podcast out.